Hi, my name is Dr. Emily Spickle, podiatrist and human movement specialist. This video is all about the anterior view gait assessment. We want to start with a posterior view gait assessment and then we will follow that with our anterior view. Just like when we did the posterior view, we want to remember our five subphases of gait, starting with initial contact. So as your client is walking, you want to look to see that they are striking the ground on the outside of the heel or in a locked, inverted, subtalar joint position. Immediately after that initial contact, we're going to proceed forward to the loading response. It's actually a little bit hard to capture that loading response as it shifts into mid-stance. Mid-stance is the point that we want to see our peak deceleration or our peak body spiral. So this is where we're looking to see if there is too much body spiral in our client. Do we see eversion of the subtalar joint during mid-stance? Is that eversion of the subtalar joint driving a knee valgus up into that proximal knee joint? And then you would proceed forward to see if it's happening in the hip as well. Again, this is easy as captured by recording the client and then slowing down the speed of that camera to see the moment that they shift into mid-stance. Not every knee valgus is driven from the ground up or from that subtalar joint eversion. You can have isolated knee valgus, which is coming from a proximal glute weakness. Make sure that you differentiate that with your clients. Next, we're gonna proceed forward to late mid-stance. Remember, this is the point of gait that you need your maximum ankle joint dorsiflexion. So if your client does not have enough ankle joint dorsiflexion, what you will see as they shift through late mid-stance is a drop down or snap down of their subtalar joint into eversion. You may also see that they do a little twist or an abductory cigarette twist. That's the way that they spin out of that ankle joint because they have limited ankle joint dorsiflexion. Or you might see that they pick up that heel, that heel early into an early heel lift. Those are the three ways that your clients would compensate during late mid-stance. And then finally, we would proceed forward to propulsion, where we want to see that our client is pushing off of the sagittal plane and getting maximum dorsiflexion of that great toe joint. In Doug, we can see that he has a little bit of an abduction. As he transfers through mid-stance, he has excessive eversion, or he has poor control of his spiral or deceleration. As he proceeds forward to push off, he's in a slightly abducted position, which means he's not going to get maximum great toe dorsiflexion and a little less efficient transfer of those elastic forces. You would use this information and apply it to your client programming to improve results and